Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I've been growing out this thick, voluminous mustache and coincidentally, I don't know why I'm not let into playgrounds anymore. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about stream processing and no, I'm not talking about R. Kelly, get your mind out of the gutter. I will be talking about the architecture of message brokers. So I have to go in about 10 minutes, so let's get into it and get started. All right, so let's start this video with a quick review of all the stream processing stuff that we did in our last video since it's been about a week due to my 10K special. So basically, to put things very simply, all stream processing really is is we have two sets of nodes in our system. We've got producers and we've got consumers, and they communicate with one another via events. Now, we could send those events directly, and some ways of stream processing do this. Uh, you could send them directly over TCP, for example, or UDP, or something like 0MQ, which works on top of those. But the majority of the time, what we want to be using is something called a broker, because it handles the load of dealing with all of those connections for us, and we can scale it you know, kind of independently of our producer and consumer nodes, which is great. So there are two main types of brokers that we're going to talk about today. They've got two fundamentally different types of architectures, and those are in-memory message brokers, right over here, and also log-based message brokers. So as you can see, I've listed a few different examples of implementations of these. Uh, so if you hear someone talk about Kafka, for example, that is a log-based message broker. Okay. So what is an in-memory message broker? Let's go ahead and get started by talking about that. Well, it's basically exactly what it sounds like. An in-memory message broker is one that operates on a server where specifically all of the events are kept in memory. So the way that this works is as you can see, we've got something like this right here, which is a linked list, or we could implement it with an array in memory or something like that. But the general gist is we want to, you know, be representing a queue. And so we've got this queue of messages right here and every single message, that's what all of these circles are, gets sent to a consumer. And eventually what's gonna happen is once it gets sent to the consumer, it's actually going to be deleted from the queue, at least temporarily. And then once the acknowledgement comes back from the consumer saying this thing is handled, then it really does get deleted from the queue. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, this is great. We've got a queue of all of these messages is must mean that you know if this guy is before this guy in the queue, that this guy is going to get processed before this guy gets processed. And that's not necessarily true. Why is that the case? Well, keep in mind that when this guy gets sent to a consumer, for example, consumer one, this guy can instantly be sent to consumer two as long as consumer two is ready for it. It is not the case that we necessarily need to wait for the completion of processing of the prior message before sending a subsequent message to a different consumer. We're effectively using round robin uh, message delivery in order to ensure that we can get the maximum possible throughput in this situation. So for example, if this network connection is slow or it's just you know hard to process this event, maybe it's asking to do something particularly taxing on the consumer, it's possible that a message that is further back in the queue gets completed before an earlier one does. So keep that in mind. So what's the kind of general conclusion of something like an in-memory message broker? Well, basically, again, we're using round robin delivery in order to maximize our throughput, but what that can lead to is out of order processing. The only way to ensure getting in order processing is by doing something called fan out, where instead of having basically multiple consumers for a given queue, what we would actually do is make a second queue over here, and this could be a second partition, for example, and then we would have you know, consumer one exclusively reading from this top queue, uh, consumer two exclusively reading from the bottom queue. But that kind of defeats the point because we want to maximize our throughput. Okay, so the other thing is that messages in memory are actually going to be deleted. Like I mentioned, when they're processed successfully, we get rid of them. We don't think about them ever again. We literally erase them from memory or garbage collect them. So what that implies is that we have poor fault tolerance. If this machine were to go down, unless we have something like a write ahead log to write all of our events to disk, we're just gonna lose all of these events. And additionally, of course, we can't replay these messages because we're deleting them once they are consumed. Of course, instead of using a write-ahead log though, which you know is going to slow our writes down a little bit because writes to memory are always faster than writes to disk, what we could instead just do is effectively the same thing as using a write-ahead log, which is a log-based message broker. 
So here's what that is going to look like. As you can see, we've got all of this stuff right here, which is on disk. And of course, those are going to be sequential writes since sequential writes on disk are faster than random ones. So let's say we've got you know, these four messages and they're next to one another on disk. What a log-based message broker will actually do is make sure that all of these messages are held in the exact order in which they came in. If a new message were to come in, message five, it would be written at the back of the queue over here sequentially. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, that right is uh, not really popping through. But the point is, in addition to basically keeping everything sequential, log-based message brokers will also ensure that all consumers read the messages within a single queue in the same order in which the messages are stored. So as you can see, what the log-based message broker will do is actually store the location of the last message that each consumer is, has read. So for example, let's say consumer B is now going to read message two. So it's going to process this. It's going to acknowledge that it was processed back to the message broker. Then what the message broker will do is now say, okay, if we're gonna send consumer B another message, the next one it's going to receive is message three. So there's no kind of round robining to be done over here. In fact, if we wanted to increase our throughput at all between consumer A and consumer B, what we'd have to do is create a second broker up here and then consumer A could start reading from that and then consumer B would still be reading from this guy over here. Now note that because we have to read every single message in the queue in order, that does technically lower our throughput. The reason being, let's say that message three is hard to read. Or I shouldn't even say hard to read, but let's say it's hard to process would be the better term. You know, whatever it is that it's making us do is kind of expensive. And now consumer B is going to do that, so it's gonna process. Let's say that whole thing takes 60 seconds. It means that it's going to be an additional 60 seconds before all of the remaining messages in the queue are processed. So any slow message is going to be a bottleneck for all of the others. So that is very important. It slows the processing of the rest and we would have to partition our queue with additional consumers reading from other partitions in order to increase throughput. At the same time, the really nice thing about the log-based message broker is that our messages are durable. Not only are they on disk if our machine were to go down, but more importantly, we don't actually delete them once we've read them. And what that means is that if for whatever reason we want to add an additional consumer in the future to reread those messages, or perhaps we're just convinced that we missed a message in one place or another, we can actually just reread them all and perform all of our computations or processing again. So now that we've pretty much talked about everything there is to know about our log-based message broker or something resembling Kafka or AWS Kinesis, let's do a little bit of conclusion where we talk about some scenarios where we would use each type of broker. So keep in mind that in-memory is basically really, really good if we want maximum throughput. It's really quick to read and to write from memory, but even in addition to that, we don't have single messages in that queue being a bottleneck. We're delivering them in round robin, and as a result of this, we can ensure that basically every single message is going to be processed as soon as there's a consumer that's available to process it. That is really, really great. At the same time though, it means that those messages are going to be processed out of order and they're also not durable for later availability. This is actually really useful for us in some circumstances. Think about, for example, if I'm a user and I'm posting videos to YouTube and you know, you're also a YouTuber and you know, your friend is a YouTuber and every single time that we upload a video to YouTube, YouTube has to basically encode it on its own backend. It doesn't really matter to YouTube whether my video gets encoded first or your video gets encoded first or your friend's video gets encoded first. The work just has to get done and then it can be stored in their database somewhere or other. The point is though, because that order doesn't matter, because they're not gonna to have to redo the encoding work in the future, and they just wanna encode as many videos as humanly possible to decrease the latency between when I post and when my video is actually available, then the in-memory broker is really, really good for them. A similar type of situation would be something like Twitter, where if you're familiar with how you actually would design a site like Twitter, users typically tend to make a bunch of posts, and those posts are then delivered to all of their followers' dedicated cache, which represents their newsfeed. Now, of course, if I post you know, half a second before you, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day whether my message gets into the cache before yours does. So, of course, 
in that case, something like an in-memory broker is totally fine. At the same time, there are a lot of situations where a log-based message broker would be really, really great. The first that I'm thinking of is sensor metrics. The reason being, sometimes the order of these really matters. Let's say we want to calculate something like a trailing average of the last 20 events. Well, if I were to start processing the events out of order, that would be pretty problematic for actually ensuring the validity of my results. This is also good if, say, you know, we currently use a normal average, but eventually we want to move to an exponential moving average and we want to have all of those metrics available. Still having those messages replayable and on disk in Kafka or Kinesis means that we can go ahead and do additional calculations down the line. Another example would be each write from a database that you know we're taking all of those writes, for example, and putting them into a search index. So in our last video, this was called change data capture. So in change data capture, obviously it's very important that the, the ordering of the writes of the database are preserved. Because let's say I say x equals 5 and then I say x equals 7, well, that's very different than if I said x equals 7 and then I overwrote that with x equals 5. So it's very important in a situation like change data capture to preserve the order of our events and also if you want to add new derived data sources down the line, it would be great if those events didn't get deleted the second we put them in our search index. Hence, something like a log-based message queue is a really appropriate choice here. Anyways guys, hope this makes sense. I gotta run because I'm about to go hit some dingers, have an intramural softball game. So I will see you all this weekend.